In this video, I'm going to show you how to create and use tree maps in Excel. This is part seven of an ongoing series of conducting exploratory data analyses using Excel. Now, if you're not familiar, a tree map is a specific kind of chart that allows you to take a numeric value and map it to a categorical hierarchy. And then the visualization will make the tiles, there'll be some squares in the tree map, proportional to the amounts based on the hierarchy. And that's a bit abstract. So let me give you a hypothetical example. So let's say you work in the grocery store industry and you have sales that come from various products that you stock in your grocery stores. And typically grocery stores have a hierarchy. So they'll have at the very top of the hierarchy, maybe they will have general merchandise often referred to as GM. And that would be things like shampoos and lotions and that sort of thing. So that GM would be, or general merchandise, would be the highest level category. And then subcategories could be shampoos and lotions, and then you could subcategorize off of that. And then for each one of those collections of subcategories, you might have total sales. And then you could use a tree map to create little tiles, little squares, that would be proportional to the amount of sales on that hierarchy general merchandise, shampoos, and then maybe like herbal shampoo versus non-herbal shampoo. I, I'm just making that up. Of course, I'm not a grocery industry expert, but hopefully you get the idea. So what we're going to do in this video is take our Titanic data set, which we've been using throughout the series, and create a tree map for it. And the numeric quantity that we're going to use in this video for sizing the tiles in the tree map is going to be the count of survived passengers based on a categorical hierarchy. And the categorical hierarchy that we will use is going to be sex, the gender at the highest level, P class, first class, second class, third class at the next level, and then lastly, embarked. Where did the passenger get on the Titanic? And then we'll have a visualization and that'll give us some general idea by just looking at the size of the tiles and how everything is aligned, a general idea of what's going on in the data. Okay, so let me flip over to Excel and I'll show you how to build a tree map chart. All right, here I am in handy dandy Excel. And what you can see here is I've just got the Titanic data, right? So the Titanic data we know and love throughout this entire series. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a tree map chart now. At the time of this recording, you can't directly create a tree map chart from an Excel pivot table. However, it's often really useful to use an Excel pivot table to get the data in the right kind of format that's amenable for creating a tree chart. And that's what I'm gonna do right here. So I'm just gonna click in one of the cells here and I'm gonna go ahead and insert a pivot table. And I like to put mine in P2 in the existing worksheet. So I'm gonna go over to P2 here and click OK. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll over to the right here so you can see the pivot table. Now, you can't see exactly everything that I'm going to do in the pivot table over here because of my smiling face, but <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm doing. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, sorry about that, is we're gonna drag sex down to the rows, males and females, great. And what we're interested in doing is creating a tree map of the hierarchy of sex and P class and embarked relative to the count of passengers that survived in the hierarchy. So we're gonna drag new survive, not surprisingly to the columns because that'll give us the counts of people that survived. And then I'll drop new survived into the values. And you can see here, sweet, I've got me data right here. Everything works out just fine, except for the fact that I don't have a hierarchy yet. But that's easy enough to create in a pivot table. Next up in the hierarchy, I'm gonna draw a new P class down to the rows. And then lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and drag embarked down to the rows. And you can see here, I have myself a nice hierarchy. Now, unfortunately, this data here is not in the format that's amenable to create a tree map directly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change the design of the pivot table to help me out with that. And then basically what I need is a denormalized table of data. And if you don't know what that means, if it sounds like Charlie Brown's teacher, wah, 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 that's okay, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So we're gonna go ahead and go up to design here. 
and we're going to click design. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the report layout. We're going to change the format of the pivot table to be in tabular form. Boop. And that's, that's pretty good. That's looking pretty good. It's not quite denormalized yet. So let's go ahead and get rid of some stuff that we don't need. So we don't need the totals. So we're going to get rid of the subtotals because we don't need them. We're going to get rid of the grand totals because we don't need them. And then lastly, what we're going to do is now ask for all of the item labels to be repeated. And now we've got ourselves a nice denormalized table. Female, 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 right? So on and so forth. This is exactly the format that we need for working with a tree map chart. Now, unfortunately, once again, you can't create a tree map chart directly from a pivot table. So if I did this and I went up to insert and I'm like, hey, grab me a tree map hierarchy chart. Eh, sorry, Dave, no dice. Okay, so no problem. We can go ahead and just use some good old fashioned copy and paste to make this happen. So we just go and highlight all of these because we want all that data. And we control C. And all we're gonna do is just click right here and we're just gonna paste the values. Boop, great. And now we grab the survived and highlight all those, hit escape, oops. Highlight all those, control C, and then paste the values. Boop. And just for grinsies, I'm gonna go ahead and put zeros in these guys because they're zeros. And now this data right here, this simple, matrix tabular format of data is all we need to create a tree map chart. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be awesome. So we just grab all this data real quick like this. And then we go up to insert and we're gonna insert a hierarchy chart, which is a tree map chart. That's what we want. And now we just get rid of the title here and I'll move it around so you can see it much better. All right, so now we've got our tree map chart. And what you can see here is the first thing that pops, right? I mean, okay, we could just like put it up on our monitor and like unfocus our eyes a little bit and just kind of look at it and things pop. First thing that pops is just based on the area, right? Females are blue, males are orange, based on counts, based on the total number of, the count of the total number of passengers that survived, proportionally speaking, a lot more were female than male. And then you can see all these S's and C's and Q's. Now, unfortunately, at the time of this recording, Excel loses the hierarchy. So right now we have a three level hierarchy, right? We've got sex, we got P class, and we've got embarked. Right now, the way Excel tree maps work, anything in the middle of the hierarchy, anything that's not at the top or the bottom, you lose it. So we don't know, for example, just by looking at the chart anyway, if this S is first, second, or third class, or is this S first, second, or third class? And that's really unfortunate because basically what that tells you is that tree maps are really effectively in, at the time of this recording in Excel, only a three-dimensional data visualization. You've got two levels of hierarchy, just the top one and the bottom one, and then you've got the value, in this case, the count of passengers that survived. So it's useful insofar as you only get three dimensions. However, these tree map type visualizations are extremely powerful if you actually get the full hierarchy. And, and let me show you what I mean by that, okay? Okay, so here I am in PowerPoint and I've got an example of a multi-dimensional, more than three, so this one's actually four dimensions, four full dimensions of data in a tree map. And let's, let's talk about how you can interpret this. So you can see here, female in real big letters and male in real big letters. And notice that there's this white dividing line. And what this tells you is that this square is female and this square is male. And we saw that in Excel, right? We saw that already that generally speaking, the proportion of survived passengers is skewed to females already. We saw that in the Excel tree map. So this doesn't surprise us. But then what we can also do is, let's just concentrate over here on the male side first, just to make things a little bit simple. And what you can see here is these are all the third class because there's a white dividing line right here, right? So this is third class and this is first class and second class. In this particular tree map visualization, the hierarchy is denoted by the size of the font. So the big font is the highest level, the next biggest font is the second level, and then the smallest font is the third level, which in this case 
is embarked, where the passenger got on the Titanic. And what we can see here is some real interesting things, right? So even in the male side of the house here, we've got patterns that just pop to our eyes. So first, first up is, based on the overall count of males that survived on the Titanic, at least based on the data we have, very few, proportionally speaking, were in second class. That's interesting. Why is that? Right, second class is, it's not necessarily as cool as third class, right? Maybe not necessarily as close to the lifeboats as first class passengers, but it's certainly better than third class. Now, this just could be simply a function of raw numbers, but there were just so many more males traveling in third class than in second class that there's just a larger number, even though maybe insofar as third class males were concerned, their survival rates weren't very good. But what we've seen in previous videos is that the survival rates in third and second and third class for males were, were pretty bad. So this is still a pretty interesting data visualization. A lot of things just pop. And notice too that I've color coded the tiles here. You can see here this little legend right here, which shows you that the smaller the number of folks, the darker, and the larger the number of folks, the lighter. So you can see right, right away, second class females that got on the Titanic in South Hampton, a lot of them survived, right? That's why it's yellow, or not yellow. <laughs> Sorry, light blue color. It's a light blue color, not yellow. It, just in case you're curious, by the way, I created this tree map chart in the R programming language. If you're not familiar, the R programming language is simply awesome for creating data visualizations. And another thing that makes the R programming language so great is that it's actually relatively easy for Excel users to learn how to program in R and create data visualizations like this. And if this interests you at all, just go ahead and click up here. I have a online program where I teach Excel users R programming and then you can learn how to create data visualizations like this. And, and trust me, it, our programming is a lot easier than you might think. So there you have it. This is a multi-dimensional, so this is four dimensions here. And you can actually put more dimensions than this in a R tree map, and, and it's really powerful. It's, it's much more useful than what you get out of the box with Excel. Okay, if you're interested in learning more, right? If you've got Excel skills, you're interested in learning more ways to analyze data more powerfully, why don't you just go ahead and check out some of these videos right here and here. That is the last video in the series, Tree Maps. This is the seventh video in exploratory data analysis with Excel. Like I said, if you're interested in learning more, check out the other videos on my channel. And until next time, please stay healthy. and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.